And uh, one more time, I'm going to say uh, we have this uh, Jason Rink on nullification, which is another method, uh, which some of you are, are familiar with, for the states to say thanks, but no thanks to the federal government when they have stepped outside their bounds. So I am kind of uh, on pins and needles, waiting to see if the guys are ready to Skype that through, and they're ready. So if you guys will pay attention, if you want to move up, we have a screen set up, and we have uh, Mike explain that. Yo! We have Jason Rink uh, online uh, on Skype. Uh, Jason, uh, just say a word, make sure I got the right line patched through. Can you guys hear me? Yes, yes we can. can. I'll turn the volume up a little more. Uh, so uh, Jason's going to talk to us a little bit about nullification and the movie he made on that topic. Uh, off you go. You have to come on forward. Okay, great. So uh, the Supreme Court has their opinion on Obamacare. Uh, but what we uh, want to ask you to do uh, is to make them come and enforce it. Um, states are standing up, states have stood up, uh, have fought against Obamacare and other unconstitutional mandates through nullification. And uh, the state of Ohio passed a constitutional amendment making the individual mandate illegal, passed it in 2011. Uh, um, the state of Oklahoma is passing a nullification, nullification to allow the Attorney General of Oklahoma to uh, defend citizens who are targeted by the federal government for non-compliance. So there are different avenues that we want to try to introduce using legislative means through the state house and state senators or through the governor or through citizens ballot initiative. Uh, whatever is the most effective means that you can use in New Hampshire. Um, so we've got some tools available. Uh, I created this film, Nullification, the Right for Remedy. It is a great that you can use to educate yourself and to educate others about nullification. It's also a great great tool to use to educate your representatives and state senators in order to get them on board with the idea of nullification and to get them to understand the history of nullification, to get them to understand that this is a legitimate constitutional remedy that is still available to we the people. Um, a couple of quick comments I wanted to make on the Supreme Court ruling. You know, the Supreme Court ruling essentially upheld Obamacare as a tax, um, not, not under the Commerce Clause. And this is not a victory. Um, this is, is just an example of Roberts and the majority court part at the Supreme Court trying to uphold this legislation by any means necessary. And if you read the decision the Supreme Court came down with, uh, what you find out is that was Robert's goal. He said, our goal is to make sure that this legislation stands, that there's any way that it can. And the dissenting opinion of Scalia and Clarence Thomas and others, um, they, they dissented saying, what you've essentially done is rewritten the law. You have not upheld the law as presented to us. You've rewritten it, ruling that it is a penalty in one sense and a, and, and a tax in another sense. And so we do an example of the Supreme Court legislating um, and taking on the taxing authority. Uh, that is definitely not within their powers. And what we understand is what Thomas Jefferson said. Thomas Jefferson said that the Supreme Court would see the Constitution as a mere thing of wax that they might be able to shape and twist into any form they pleased. Thomas Jefferson and the Founders did not believe that the Supreme Court was the final arbiter of all things constitutional. Uh, Thomas Jefferson and the Founders, like James Madison, believed that the states were the final check on federal power. And in any case where the Supreme Court and the Congress and the executive branch conspire against the people to uh, pass unconstitutional mandates that are not enumerated in the Constitution, then it was up to the states. The states were duty-bound to resist and do that through whatever means that they could. And so that's what I wanted to just deliver that message. This is reigniting nullification across the country. States are starting to do this, and uh, I want to encourage you to get, get on board as well. I'm happy to answer any questions regarding nullification right now. Uh, so Jason, let's, let's start by asking about uh, Rick Scott's immediate move in Florida to say he would not implement 
Right, so I believe that has to do with uh, the implementation of the health care exchanges, the state mandated health care exchanges. That's correct. Uh, so I'll just repeat the question for the benefit of the audience. Uh, so Rick Scott in Florida moved very quickly to uh, say that they would not implement the, the exchanges, and I believe the Medicaid expansion as well. And, and that's an example of a state uh, effectively nullifying the federal law by saying it shall not stand here. Yes, and what he's essentially said, from what I understand, is that they, they would implement them ultimately at the absolute last moment possible, but they will to that, and they, this is what I, I have heard, and I, I, I could be incorrect on this, but if you read deeper into what, is, what he said, was that the state ultimately would abide by it, but at the last moment possible. And so what they're saying is they're not going to make it any easier than they need to for the federal government to do this because they believe that it's going to be repealed. I, I am not sure that it's going to be repealed. Um, so again, I, I could double check that information, but I actually think at, at, the, at the end of the day, when push comes to shove, I think I think Florida will implement them, but not until 2014. Uh, can you uh, can you comment on the most effective way for uh, states to uh, to nullify uh, federal laws such as this one? It it really depends on the state. Sure. Um, and for example, the state of Ohio decided to do a bad initiative that required 4,000 citizens in Ohio collecting 440,000. Yes? Okay, so I'm, I'm told that the uh, the PA system here needs me to yell into it, so uh, I apologize. Uh, and uh, okay. New Hampshire, in fact, has a statute on the books which uh, effectively prevents a penalty or assessment uh, against its citizens for not having the uh, the mandated care. I don't know if you had a chance to uh, to look at that. It's not a full yeah. And how long has that been? In? That was that was implemented last year, correct? Um, yeah, I'm getting a yes. Yeah, so essentially um, something has been placed into, was that just into the, to the that was a, a, that was done through the uh, state house, the state legislature? That was, yes. Okay, that's what I thought. And so the question is, is well, is that going to provide any protection? Well, state nullification ultimately rests on those who are in the positions of, of uh, who have the executive power in any state. Because whenever the federal government wants to enforce federal laws, they tend to lean on the pol the state of New Hampshire, for example. So what's important is to make sure that if the federal government decides that they're going to come in, I don't know this, that there are people in positions of power in New Hampshire who will stand up for the people of New Hampshire and say, no, we have passed this law. This is a penalty or a fee or a fine. Um, it, it might need to be amended to say pay a tax uh, because that was sort of an unexpected decision and uh, how that played out. But it ultimately comes down to you and what army, any political argument does. And if the people of New Hampshire have a governor and uh, sheriffs that will stand behind this, then I think we're going to see some interesting things happen, and, and this does have the power to nullify it. Excellent. Thank you, uh, Jason. Would you like to tell us just a little bit about the uh, nullification film, The Rightful Remedy? Uh, we do have a few copies here. Uh, uh, and some tens you of cut off there a second. You know, tell you a little bit about what? About the film, Nullification, The Rightful Remedy, which you produced. Yes, yes, I'm going to tell you about the uh, If you're cutting out, I'm not. Um, so we're getting ready to, we're screening the film all over the country. We're getting ready to screen it at Freedom Fest in the Libertarian uh, Film Festival there. Um, I have a screening set up in Ohio, in Salt Lake City, uh, over the next 30 days. We're drawing good crowd, oh, it's a lot of interest. Uh, I just spoke uh, to a crowd in Fort Worth of about 200 uh, about the film, and in North Carolina, I'd love 
help. Um, the film covers the history of the idea of nullification. Um, it covers, um, talks about a lot of the myths that are out there about nullification, how it was used in history, uh, that it still is a legitimate rightful remedy. Um, it gives a lot of um, uh, history from Kevin Goodsman and Thomas E. Woods talk a lot about that history. Um, and then we talk about the different issues that nullification has been used in the last 20 years throughout the country. Marijuana legislation, real ID, health care, firearms freedom. These are all examples. Um, it's a 72 minute film, so it's very short and, and it's a great tool to hand to anybody if they know nothing about nullification or if they know a little bit and want to learn more. We're encouraging bulk ordering uh, of the film to hand out to your representatives and senators so that we can make sure that we have the people in power who will stand behind us when we do pass these nullification bills. All right, uh, Jason, I'm going to have to call uh, a halt at this point. I thank you very much for taking the time and trouble to talk to the uh, Coalition of New Hampshire Taxpayers uh, picnic here. I'm going to hand back over to Ed Nail as the uh, Master of Ceremonies today. And uh, so I'm going to thank you and I'm going to close down the call and I'll chat with you later. Thanks again. Thank you, you guys. Rock TV.